Matrix Operations. So in this video, we're talking about math with matrices. So we'll start off by talking about arithmetic with matrices, addition, subtraction, all that, and then move on to matrix algebra and some algebra rules for matrices. Matrix arithmetic. Let's talk about adding two matrices. So if we have two matrices, A and B, we can expand that and we'll expand it into just two of uh, three by three matrices. So when we add, this is pretty easy. It's just an element wise addition. So the, the one one element in the summed matrix is simply A11 plus B11. Then we go to this one two element, it's A12 plus B12. And that's the one two element in the summed matrix. So really we just go point by point and add and we get the summed matrix. A very similar thing for subtraction. This one one element in the, the difference matrix is A11 minus B11. That's what we see here, A11 minus B11. The one two element in this matrix is A12 minus B12. And we just go element by element and fill in the difference matrix and that's subtraction. What if we multiply a matrix by a scalar? Well, we go into the elements of the matrix and multiply every single one of them by that scalar S. Multiplication by a matrix. This is more difficult. It's not too hard conceptually, but there's a lot of math here. And matrix multiplication is not element-wise multiplication. So don't confuse that with what we're doing with addition and subtraction. So for example, this one one element in the multiplied matrix is not just A11 times B11. We're doing row column operations. The one one element in the multiplied matrix is the top row in A multiplying the first column in B. So a row vector times a column vector ends up being A11 times B11 plus A12 times B21 plus A13 times B31. And that's what we get for this first element. Now let's just pick this one over here. So this would be the two, three element in the matrix. And so what we would do is we would multiply the middle row in A times the third column in B. So that would end up being A21 times B13 plus A22 times B23 plus A23 times B33. And we just go through every element in the multiplied matrix to do that. So it's a lot of work. Now, if we multiply a matrix times a column vector, well, this is a little bit easy. It's just the top row times this column vector, and that fills in the top element in the multiplied column vector. So A11 times X1 plus A12 times X2 plus A13 times X3. That's the top element in this multiplied column vector. And let's go to the second one, the, the second element in this multiplied column vector. That is A21 times X1 plus A22 times X2 plus A23 times X3 and so on. So matrix multiplication, there's a lot more math involved here and it is not element wise. We're doing row column operations. There's what's called a matrix transpose. And essentially what we're doing is flopping the elements around the diagonal. And I've sort of animated that over here. In fact, that's exactly what we're doing. So in our original matrix, we have an A13. And in the transpose matrix, we're going to just flop that around the diagonal and ends up down here. So we're just flopping the matrix about its diagonal. And I think that animation tells everything. So in the notation down here, this little apostrophe in some people's notation actually means a transpose. Here, I'm just talking about an element in the transpose matrix. So the ij element in the transpose matrix is the ji element in the original matrix. So that's a transpose, flipping around the diagonal. There's what's called a Hermitian transpose. This is a transpose, but then when the transpose is done, 
we calculate the complex conjugate of every element in that transpose matrix. And so the way we would write that is the ij element in the transposed matrix is the ji element complex conjugate. Determinants. So the determinant of A, how do we think of that? What's sort of the uh, loose intuitive way we can think about it? It's really a magnitude or a volume of the matrix. And it's used in a lot of different algorithms. We've already seen how we can use the determinant of a matrix to determine if it's solvable. The matrix inverse. This is also a very computationally intensive thing to calculate. And we'll be getting into how that that's done. So, but if we pre-divide a matrix by its inverse, we'll get the identity matrix. So this is just one. So think of it as A divided by A gives us one. Matrix division. There's two types of pre-division in MATLAB. We can pre-divide. So this is A pre-dividing B. And in MATLAB, we would write it this way. Notice the angle. And we, the A is sort of underneath this line. So that's a backward slash and then B. So the A comes before B, but we're still dividing by A. In the second thing here, we are post dividing by matrix A. And so we would write that as a slash this way, the forward slash. So B divided by A. And don't mix these two. These give different answers. In both cases, we're dividing by A. But in the first case, we're pre-dividing, and in the second case, we're post-dividing. So they're not equal. Don't swap those two. Matrix multiplication. Similar thing here. We can pre-multiply B by A, or we can post-multiply B by A. In both cases, it's A times B, but the order that we do it in gives different answers. A times B does not necessarily equal B times A. That covers the arithmetic. Let's talk about algebra with matrices. So we would like to actually manipulate equations with matrix terms in it like A. So we don't necessarily know the size or the elements of A. All we know is that it's a matrix and we want to manipulate those things. And this is used all the time when we formulate numerical methods. And they follow similar algebra rules to standard algebra, but there are some differences. So we have first the commutative laws, like what happens if we reverse the order of things? For addition, we can change that. A plus B is the same as B plus A. However, for multiplication, that is not true. A times B does not equal B times A. Now, one exception to this I know of, if A and B are both diagonal matrices, we are free to reverse the order of the multiplication. Perhaps there's other special cases. I'm not aware of that. But in general, we can't reverse the order of multiplication. The associative laws. So the first one, we have A plus B plus C. But on the left, we're choosing to add A and B first and then add C. And it turns out that gives the same answer if we were to add B and C first and then add A. We get the same thing. And for multiplication, a similar thing happens. We have A times B times C. We could choose to multiply A and B first and then pre-multiply C. Or we could multiply B and C and then post-multiply A. As long as we're keeping the order of those matrices, we can change which ones we multiply first and second. So that's called the associative laws. The distributive laws. So if we have A plus B, that sum times C, we can write it as A times C plus B times C. This is like standard algebra. Likewise, if we're pre-multiplying A times the sum of B plus C, we can write that as A times B plus A times C. We're, notice in both these cases, we're maintaining the order of the multiplication. In the first case, we were post-multiplying by C, and in the second case, we were pre-multiplying by A, and we're doing that on the right-hand side. That's the distributive laws. Matrix inverses and transposes, and the laws tend to look a little bit similar from this. But if we pre-divide A by itself or post-divide A by itself, we always get the identity matrix. 
The inverse of the inverse of a matrix is just that matrix back again. Now, here's one that pops up a lot of times. What if we invert the product of two matrices? Well, it turns out we will reverse the order and then invert both ones individually. So the inverse of A times B is B inverse times A inverse. What if we inverse the transpose of a matrix? That's the same as the transpose of the inverse. So we can swap the order of the inverse and the transpose operation. What about the transpose of the sum of two matrices? This is actually pretty easy. That's the sum of the transpose of both matrices individually. The transpose of the transpose is just the matrix back again because we flipped it along as diagonal once. And if we do it again, we end up back at the same point. Now, the, the law for transposes when we have the transpose of the product of two matrices is really the same as the inverses. We're going to reverse the order of the multiplication and then transpose both individually. So the transpose of A times B is B transpose times A transpose. Addition with a scalar. What if we have a scalar plus A? Well, it turns out that actually doesn't make sense. So we don't ever want to write that. Now, if we do that in MATLAB, what it's going to do is add that scalar to every element in A because MATLAB lets you do some shortcut things. But symbolically on paper, we don't want to write that. That does not make sense. Now, what probably is happening is we have this scalar multiplying the identity matrix plus A. That's probably what is meant when this were, were written, in which case we have our A matrix. It's just that we're adding alpha down all of the diagonals because this alpha times the identity matrix gives us a diagonal matrix with the scalar alpha going down the diagonal. Multiplication with a scalar. So the sum of A and B times the scalar alpha, well, it's just scalar alpha times A plus scalar alpha times B, very much like ordinary algebra. Now, alpha times the product of A, we can choose to associate that alpha either with A or with B. doesn't matter, but we're, we still can't reverse the order of A and B. Not allowed to do that. Operations with our special matrices. Any matrix times the zero matrix equals the zero. And it doesn't matter whether we are pre-multiplying or post-multiplying with that zero matrix, we always get the zero matrix back. And similarly, if we pre or post-multiply with the identity matrix, we just get our matrix back again. If we add the zero matrix to any matrix, we just get that matrix back. And any matrix minus itself gives us our zero matrix. Let's practice this with an example. Let's simplify this equation. And staring at it long enough, probably the first thing I wanna work on, there's a D on both sides. So let's subtract D from both sides. So the first thing I do is I write the equation with subtracting D from both sides. Well, D minus D, a matrix minus itself is the zero matrix. We have another D minus itself, that's the zero matrix. Any matrix we're adding to the zero matrix is just that matrix again, so it's BC. Any matrix adding to the zero matrix is just that matrix. So now we're here. So I see a C on both sides. I wanna somehow do something with that. So I'm going to invert both sides. So here we have the inverse of an inverse and just an inverse on this side. So the inverse of an inverse is no inverse. So we just have C inverse A. The inverse over here of B times C ends up being inverse of C times inverse of B. At this point, I'm looking at an inverse of C on both sides. So I will pre-multiply both sides by C. So here I'm pre-multiplying both sides by C. And now I have a C times C inverse on both sides. So anytime we divide a matrix by itself, we get the identity matrix. So the identity matrix is now on both sides. And the identity matrix times any matrix is just that matrix. So the final simplified equation is A equals B inverse and C and D completely dropped out of the equation. So this is a good example of how we manipulate uh, matrix equations following special matrix algebra. From the bottom of my heart, thank you very much for watching this video. 
I love hearing your stories about how these videos helped you. I also love answering your questions. So please tell me your stories and ask your questions in the comment section. I promise I will try to answer every single question that's asked. If you like this video, hit the like and subscribe button. I also recommend visiting the official course website that has links to the latest versions of the notes, the latest videos, and there's lots of other resources to help you learn, including implementations in MATLAB. I'll see you in the next video.